Imagine you're a chef and you have a secret sauce. You're sure it elevates any dish, but does it truly make a difference in a variety of meals? Believe it or not, statistics can help you answer this question. In this video, we're talking about the T-test and the ANOVA. Hi, I'm Matthew Courtney, and here we talk all about education, research, and data. If you're into that, make sure you subscribe to this channel and come be a part of our community. Both the t-test and ANOVA are tools that are used to compare means, but they have distinct uses. The t-test is your basic taste test. It determines if there's a statistically significant difference between the means of two groups. T-tests can be independent sample tests, which compare the means of two separate groups, like when you want to measure the impact of a new teaching method in two different classes, or they could be paired sample tests, which compare the means of the same group at different times, like if you have pre-tests and post-tests. If the t-test is just a taste, the ANOVA, or analysis of variance test, is like a grand buffet. ANOVA checks if there are significant difference in means among three or more groups. It discerns if at least two groups are statistically significant from each other. If an ANOVA signals a difference, post hoc tests are used to identify which group stands out. Remember, ANOVA doesn't tell you which specific groups were different, just that at least two groups were. Imagine that your school wants to test a new interactive learning app. Three teachers, each with their unique teaching styles, integrate the app into their lessons. You want to know if the student's performance differ based on those teacher styles. Using a t-test, we could compare just two teachers at a time. But with three teachers, we'd run three separate t-tests. In this scenario, it's better to start with an ANOVA. With one sweep, it assesses if there's statistically significant differences in student performance amongst all three classes. And if yes, post hoc tests will pinpoint where those differences lie. In this way, ANOVA can save us time, especially as our number of groups begins to grow. Let's jump over to a spreadsheet now so that I can show you how to run these two tests. Here, we have three random distributions of data. Let's start by running a t-test. First, I click into an empty cell and type equal sign t.test, open parentheses. Then I select my first column of data and type a comma. Next, I select the data I want to compare it to and type a comma. Then I type either a one or a two, depending if I want to do a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. A one-tailed test checks for statistical differences in only one direction while a two-tailed test checks for differences in both directions. I'm going to use two for my example and type a comma. Finally, I want to select the type of test. Type a one if you want to use a paired sample test, a two if you want to use a two-sample test that assumes equal variance, like if you want to compare the means of two groups under similar conditions, or type a three if you're looking into a two-sample test that does not assume equal variances ideal for comparing two groups that might have different variability in their data sets. I'm going to type a 1. Then we'll close parentheses and hit Enter. The output shows what we call the p-value. A p-value is commonly considered to be statistically significant if it is below 0.05. In this instance, with a value of 0.83, we do not have a statistically significant difference between the two groups. OK, now let's shift over and do an ANOVA. The ANOVA is a little bit more involved, so we're going to use an extension called Excel Miner Analysis Toolpack. In Excel, the equivalent toolpack is called the Data Analysis Toolpack. We begin by launching the toolpack. You can see that at the top, there are three types of ANOVA tests to choose from. Use a single factor ANOVA when comparing the means of three or more groups based on one independent variable. Opt for a two-factor ANOVA with replication when examining the effects of two independent variables on a dependent variable and when you have multiple observations for each group combination. Choose a two-factor ANOVA without replication when you're interested in the interaction between two independent variables, but only have one observation for each combination of the two factors. I'm going to choose single-factor ANOVA for the sake of demonstration. When you open the drop-down menu, you simply need to complete the form and click OK. I will input my range, confirm that my data is grouped by columns, indicate that I have labels in my first row, 
and select my output range. When I click OK, the test results will populate. Here you can see a detailed output. The essential number for verifying statistical significance here, again, is the p-value. With a p-value of 0 0.000007, one that is far below the threshold of 0 0.05, we know that somewhere in here is a statistically significant difference. We will have to do a series of post hoc tests to determine where, and I'll do another video on post hoc tests. If all of this spreadsheet work feels like a lot, check out my free distribution comparison tool at www.matthewbcourtney.com forward slash DCT. It will allow you to upload your data and calculate a series of t-tests in mere minutes. Both the t-tests and ANOVA are valuable tools in your data analysis toolbox. Taking time to learn to perform and interpret the results from both tests is essential as you grow as an evidence-informed decision maker. If you found value in this video today, make sure you like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this playlist. I'll see you next time.